Hey guys, this is Jake Schkoss. Welcome back to my Skyblock Survival Series. This is Episode 2, and as you recall from the last episode, today we were going to work on our cactus farm. Now, it's been a couple days, and I've been grinding out resources. Uh, as you see here, we've got lots of smooth stone, some stone bricks, and we'll make more with all of this, and of course some cobblestone to uh, get us going here. Also picked up some sand some iron, and we've got wood for chests. So what we're going to start with is just knocking out the hoppers that we're going to need for this. And uh, then we'll head downstairs and start working on the third branch of the cactus farm. Alrighty, so here we go. Now if you guys are unfamiliar with the hopper recipe, uh, it's just going to go like this. Oh, down. Chest first. So if anyone ever tells you guys that YouTubers are perfect and do everything right the first time, they're totally lying to you. There we go. So that's your hopper recipe. One chest. Iron, 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 iron. And then of course we're going to need just one more. And there we go. Alright, we're all set. Let's head downstairs. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar with the... Uh, click and drag methods that I was just using there. Um, if you hold left click and drag across a number of boxes, it will evenly distribute a stack between all the squares you're dragging it on. Um, so that way you don't have to like divide things in half and do all that nonsense. Okay. And then... Um, right clicking and dragging a stack, we'll just deposit one uh, into each slot you drag it over. Uh, so that's kind of how that'll work. Alright, so let's see what we're doing here. Three, four, five. Okay, seven across. And how far back are we going from and seven out. Alright, perfect. Of course we'll be starting on this side and building on top of our little wooden setup here. Oh. Interesting. There's supposed to be stairs there. Okay, well, that's something we'll fix later. That's the center block there. Two. All right. Two and three. Six and seven. Okay, perfect. Now, anytime you guys are building something like this, you got to be careful not to let mobs spawn up here because they will shoot you with arrows and explode you off of your creations, and then you fall down there and lose all the stuff that you've been gathering forever. So just make sure to keep some torches with you, drop them every now and again. When you're this close, it doesn't really matter. But if you get 25 blocks away from a dark block, mobs can spawn on it. So yeah, it just it pays to go ahead and uh, light it up. Uh huh? Well, that's odd. There we go. So what I'm doing for this one is I like the little tapered thing that I've got going with the uh, other ones. You can kind of see it a little bit here, but not super well, so you'll kind of see as I build here what, what I'm talking about. Now this bottom one is of course the shortest, 
so the rest are going to be a little bit longer than this one. And then, I don't know if you guys can hear that in the background, but we've got the lawn care people um, kind of mowing, so uh, just ignore that, and if it gets too crazy loud, I'll, uh, I'll cut the recording and come back when they're done. Alright, so that's the basic structure of it right there, and I... did this like glitch out and put this block on the wrong side, or am I just going crazy? Okay, not going to worry about it right now. So yeah, I mean that's the basic structure there. Now to do the taper the way I've got it over there, you have to use like a filler block to attach the other blocks to. And of course, if you guys don't know about the holding shift to make sure that you don't fall off of blocks thing, uh, that's kind of what I'm doing here. Make sure I don't fall. Um, I'm just holding it with my pinky. That can be kind of uncomfortable for some people, but um, it's worth it to just get used to it because you fall a lot less often. Now, I will caution you guys, uh, who are new to the game, with the shift-click thing, if you're doing it on a transparent block, like a uh, half-slab in the lower half of the block, or a set of stairs, uh, it doesn't work. So, don't entrust your life to shift uh, on transparent blocks. Um, I think glass is okay. I haven't tested it, and I'm certainly not going to test it right here, for obvious reasons. But yeah, I think glass is okay, but your other transparent blocks, you just don't want to do it. Dang it. Alright, let's... Got that. Not a big deal. Yeah, misplacing the... Uh, cobblestone and the stone brick isn't really a big, big deal. Uh, misplacing the stone blocks kind of sucks because when you, I don't have silk touch and when you mine them back up it turns back into cobble and then wasted all your cooking fuel and it's just kind of irritating. So be a little more careful with those. All in all, not a big deal. In Minecraft, you're going to end up wasting a lot of materials and some time occasionally, and it's just part of the game. You kind of get used to it, and it's, it's actually part of the fun, in a way, because you're trying different things and seeing what works and seeing what doesn't, and uh, for me personally, you can feel a little bit, like, I generally feel a little prouder of something that I've worked out on my own rather than something I've just sort of copied from someone. So, like, if you have an idea for how you want something to work, go ahead and try it out first before, like, you go searching online for all the tips and tricks. Because it might not be the most efficient design that has ever been invented. Well, that one's gone. But, uh, that doesn't really matter. As long as you're having fun with the game and getting done what you want to get done, I, I really wouldn't worry about it. Because, I mean, it's a video game, and the whole point is to, to have fun with it, so... Yeah, whatever you have to do to have fun with it, I'd say just do that. Now, me personally, I prefer the uh, vanilla version of Minecraft, and so that's primarily what I will be recording. But if you guys like mods and stuff, spice it up, make it more interesting for you. Um, I certainly won't condemn anyone for that. I am a fan of certain mods myself, though. Uh, just conceptually, not because I haven't actually played any of them. Anyway, 
now we're going to make the base for the next section of this. And what I'm doing over here is just leaving a spot open so I can get in and out if I need to. Now I should have all the materials I need for getting this set up, but like I'll have to come back through and do the, um, the water buckets up at the very top when we connect with this. And I know that looks like it's kind of far away, but it's really actually not all that far away. So yeah, let's see. Uh, need water to drop right there, so we're going to need a hole in the floor here. And there we go. So you see with the water as it runs down, I've got it set up so that the buckets on top will just keep flowing and then where the water stream would end is where it drops, which resets the flow distance and allows it to flow um, for water at seven blocks from the source. So when it does that fall, it registers as a source and it will flow seven more blocks from that. So with three water buckets, like I have water flowing all the way down this. But you gotta make sure you put the holes in the right spots or it doesn't work. So yeah, it's a bit of counting and just fiddling with things and testing things. Now I'm a fan of testing designs on a creative world before I implement them in to a regular uh, survival series or a skyblock or anything like that. And that just lets you n use infinite resources to play around and redesign and uh, tear things apart and put them back together and just kind of see what what you need to do with everything to get it working. Okay, and then if you guys are curious, this is the two holes for the other two water streams. Uh, they do start a little bit fo more forward, but that's okay. Uh, it all works out. Yeah, but like I was saying, um, like I don't think it hurts anything to test a design in creative before implementing it. It just helps work out kinks and little issues before you go live with the design. Okay, so... Gotcha. Right? Yeah. Alright, something's broken. What's going on? Didn't, what in that? Alright, am I going am I going crazy? Look. Five, six, seven. Right. Is that not the center? Okay. Okay, yeah, so apparently I built that whole thing off center by like a block. Because that should be the center. And it's not. Wow. Uh, Alright, I guess I'm a little more tired than I thought I was. Alright, um, I'll cut the video real quick here, fix that up, and then we'll get, uh, we'll get back to actually building it correctly. Alright, well, we've got that all uh, fixed up, shifted one block to the side, uh, it's now nice and even, no problems there, oh, look at that, so nice. 
Now the one thing that we do need to go ahead and do is create our staircase here so we can get up and down. And based on the fact that I almost fell off like three times fixing that, I'm going to go ahead and toss a chest down here and drop off some of our more valuable materials and just like we'll keep a couple of everything with us but uh leave a lot of it in that chest so if we do fall off at least I won't spend the next three real life days grinding out more resources to finish this All right, now, from here, we want to go ahead and start building the uh, next portion, the next platform. And how you do that is just go from here, which is uh, where the water is going to fall. You want to go seven blocks out. So that's, or eight if you count this one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, okay. Alright, well, my keyboard has decided to rebel against me. Um, I will get that fixed up, and I will be right back. Alright, literally as soon as I stopped recording, the keyboard started working again. Six. Okay, so that's uh, eight blocks from the hole or seven blocks from the hole, eight if you're counting the hole. And then this block right here is where water is going to come down from above. So this is going to be the beginning of the taper for this floor. And uh, if you're unfamiliar with the word taper, it's basically just like the little arrow design thing that we have going. So if you're copying this design into your world, and absolutely feel free to because like, I think it looks pretty good, and it's fairly efficient. So if it's something you want to do, definitely, definitely have at that. But that's basically how you build it. Like, you go from here, count out 7 or 8 if you're counting the hole, and then that's the very tip, and you just kind of flare it back uh, until you've got a platform that's 7 blocks wide. Alright, and then from there, we just build the, uh, the sides again. And then, um, for any of you watching who are going, you don't need to put this block here, I know. Um, I've just kind of gotten into the habit of doing it, and so sometimes I will and sometimes I won't. And, um, and yeah, occasionally I lose these blocks to the void because, you know, I cut them and they fly away from me and step towards me, but I'm not too worried about it. A uh, wood is something I can get lots of um, without too much trouble, so not a big deal. Now, if it was dirt, I would absolutely agree with you, because on Skyblock, dirt is very valuable. So, I never really use it for scaffolding, I just use wood. Uh, if you're doing your own Skyblock survival, I would kind of suggest that be the same way you go. Um, not necessarily wood, per se, but um, definitely not dirt. And... Probably not netherrack unless you have some sort of source for it. But anyway, uh, we've got all of that done. You kind of remember the process from below. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out here. And I'll come back when we start doing the interior of each of these. So you can kind of see how that all comes together. Alright, be right back. Hey guys, obviously you can tell I'm not quite finished yet. I uh, still got a little ways to go, but it occurred to me that I hadn't really showed you how to make these top portions, uh, and it's very similar to how you would do the back portions like we were doing earlier. Uh, you just use the, uh, the scaffolding block of your choice and kind of taper that all back. Now, as far as distances go, um, once you get to this top piece and you're starting the next one, I'm going to go four back uh, for this particular design. 
Um, you could take it a little bit further back if you wanted to have more room out here uh, to work with or build stuff on, uh, and it shouldn't interfere. Um, looks like you could slide this whole front section back uh, two further if you wanted to, uh, so you don't have all this wasted space on the inside. Um, like this is this just looks good to me because it's not like if you look over on the side it's staggered a little bit and you can tell, but it's not like super staggered so it doesn't make it look like a very weak structural support. If you understand what I'm saying, like it looks a little stronger because of how connected they are uh, versus if this was slid back a little that would look like there wasn't a whole lot of connection between this section and this section and so it wouldn't look quite as strong now if you want it to look the absolute strongest it could possibly be obviously you want to have just one block as your taper and I don't know if you can do that with the way I have it set up um, What am I yeah, yeah, you could do that. Uh, it would just be more wasted space up front and probably some wasted space in the back, but that's not a big deal. Um, yeah, that's not a big deal. And of course, above me, you see where we're going to do the sheep farm at some point. You got all that dirt, like I was talking about in episode one. I just want to cobble half slough along the bottom of that and all the other ones for consistency's sake, and that'll look a lot better like that. Oh, lag spike. Alright, that's fun. Alright, so yeah, that's kind of that. Uh, I will continue building here, and then uh, I'll get back to you once we're all finished up. Hey again, guys. Uh, as you can tell, we're uh, pretty much almost done. I figured I'd just go ahead and do this last section on camera in case there was anything that I forgot to show you in any of the other sections. And of course it's always exciting when a project basically reaches its conclusion and you can just kind of sit and look at it and you're like, oh yeah, that looks amazing. Love it. You can just be proud of what you did or, or not. Um, I guess it depends, but in this case, I, I've done a few of these, and I know I'm going to be proud of it at the end, so that's, that's that. That's okay. Um, I do have a plan for that, and I will come back to it in just a second. Conveniently enough, when bottom-up construction fails, you top-down is always available. So uh, we will use that to finish this this build off here. So, um, the trouble I was having with my keyboard a little bit earlier, uh, that's something that has happened before, and I have a strong suspicion it has something to do with Logitech's unifying technology. Um, like, it's really awesome that I can connect two devices to the same receiver. Uh, that's their unifying thing, if you're unfamiliar with it. What is slightly less awesome is that occasionally they interfere <laughs> with each other and I can only use one at a time. Um, that's obviously rather inconvenient for gaming, so since I have plenty of USB ports, I'm probably just going to go ahead and install the second receiver and uh, suck up the fact that I have one less USB port. In my mind, not a huge deal. Um, 
but I guess it depends on your situation. Like, if you're just really hard up for USB ports, I, I guess you wouldn't want to do that. But, um, honestly, you can, you can always get more USB ports. They have the uh, USB hubs that will extend a single port out to, like, four anyway, and you can uh, do what's called daisy chain those all the way up to 127 USB ports without losing any um, data throughput speeds, theoretically. Now the one caution I would have about that particular thing is 127 is the theoretical limit. Um, I personally haven't actually tested that because I don't need that many USB ports. So it may not work in practice and of course for uh, devices that need power from the USB ports, uh, that wouldn't work. You'd have to use uh, powered USB ports uh, and they do have those but then you'd also need like quite a few power strips and and that just becomes a, a tangled mess of wires very quickly so but yeah if you need to expand one USB port to four USB ports just use a powered USB port hub and you're pretty much good to go make sure it matches the speed of the one that you're expanding um, or is better but typically it's good to match up your stuff so like you're not wasting resources like if you have a three point Oh, USB port on your computer, you wouldn't want to use a 2.0 USB port hub because you're limiting uh, how much speed you can get out of those devices when the hub could hand or when the port on your computer could handle more. All right, so yeah, that's kind of that. Now we're going to go ahead and grab the sand and start putting up the internal bits and pieces here. Uh, not the chest, sand. There we go. Alright. And so you can kind of see how this all comes together and what it's going to look like on the inside. So you know kind of how to set it up. Alright, yeah. And if you're wondering why there's like this wood strip along the bottom of each of the platforms, when I first started the island, I built out with wood because that's what I had available because I, I didn't have the cobble thing set up yet. And um, like at one point, I was just sort of expanding out, expanding out, expanding out, and I was like, I wonder how far out I can go. So I just took a stack of wood planks here and nothing else because I was pretty sure I was going to fall off eventually. And I just went out. And just built out as far as I possibly could and fell off the world. And I'm like, okay, well, that's how far out I can go. And so each of the platforms uh, goes out absolutely as far as I can possibly build out. Uh, so they are the absolute maximum in I, any direction that I can go. But yeah, that's what that's there. And I could replace it with cobblestone, but I kind of like the fact that it's got history. So I just sort of left it there. And I don't think it looks bad necessarily but um it, it's like a historical landmark so I'm I'm just gonna leave that that's just gonna stay yeah that's just gonna stay there at any rate so um yeah basically when you do the water here it's gonna come down this is the first square where it's gonna start flowing along the ground and then you put sand here and here and then just to save resources, because the cactuses can't be next to each other, a cobble there and there, and then you just stagger it, and you can get up to eight sand blocks, and thus eight cactuses in each of these sections. And at that point, water goes down here, and you're basically finished with that. So we'll put cobble there, cobble there, and then what I do to light to make sure that the cactus pieces that are floating in the water don't uh, glitch over the hole and just rest on this block, so I set up a little barrier right along there. 
And then, of course, to make the cactuses break automatically, just put a cobble block here, right above this one. So the cactus will just sit here. When it grows one, uh, it's next to a block, which it can't do, so it pops off, and then hopefully just goes in the water. Uh, which is what we want it to do. So do that and that. That and that. Okay, and then of course, obviously don't want mobs spawning up here, and obviously torches where the water is going to be is not going to work. So, uh, what I do for that is just put torches on these instead, and just do one on the outside, and then um, on the fronts as well. And that kind of gets you set up with that. Not that you need that many torches, but I, I don't like to take chances, and torches are something I can get lots of, and apparently that's something I need to go get more of, so um, I'll go do that. And we'll get back to this in just a second. Alright, and we're back. Now, obviously you'll notice we've got more torches, so we're all set to go. Also went ahead and picked up some more cobble, some water, and some cactus, so we can just kind of knock all of this out in this last little chunk here. So, let me just double check, make sure I got the torches all sorted out. Do -do -do. Oh, that was a bit of a fail. All right. Okay, yeah, we're solid. Good to go there. All right, and then we'll just do the same thing on the next few levels here. I like oh, just a lot of the 64 games. Star Fox. Um... Totally blank. Oh, uh, Ocarina of Time from the Zelda series. Like, the 64 was just a good system. And it wasn't the best graphics in the world, but the games were just amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, if. Just like, if you see a game and you're not sure about it because of the graphics, I would just. I would ask you to consider trying it anyway, just because sometimes they are great games, uh, kind of like Minecraft is, even though they might not have all the fancy cool graphic stuff that has ever existed. So that's got the hoppers and chests set up. Now we won't actually be able to open the chests until we upgrade this block, uh, this block and the one over there with um, transparent blocks. Uh, that's not a huge deal right now though. That's something we will come back and do in just a little bit. Right now we need to go ahead and put the water in. So that's what these buckets are for. And of course we will be starting with the one over here <laughs> so that uh, the water doesn't wash me away while I'm trying to do the other ones. That goes there. See it just, the water is going to flow naturally towards the lowest point. Now if I put it up here it would go all over the place so that's why it's got to go right there on the sides. But yeah, like that'll go down. You see it falls and then it just keeps flowing. It falls and it just keeps doing that. So, yeah, if you're unfamiliar with the water mechanics, that's kind of how that all works. Uh, not too complicated. 
Now this one can go right here and it just flows straight down. It looks nice. Uh, not that anyone's ever going to be back in here, but um, I still like to make things look nice if I can. Uh, just kind of one of those things. And then that goes there. And now as we go down, we want to do that. Kind of close off our staircase here. And then if we ever need to access this area again, we can actually just swim up the, the water stream. It's a little annoying, and it takes more time than I would typically like to spend getting from one place to another. But, like, honestly, I won't have a whole lot of reason to come up here once this is done. Like, later on, we'll have the uh, upgrade project to do. And then that'll pretty much, pretty much be it. Boom. There we go. That's done. Got a little leg spike as that all washes down and away. And there. Alright, just fill this in. And there we go. That is another whole branch of the cactus farm. Pretty much complete. I'm thinking next episode might be sheep farm. I did do a challenge off camera, the uh, wool collector challenge. But basically you turn in five of each color of wool, which is uh, an interesting challenge to do when you don't have any sheep. Uh, because you have to get all the dye colors five times and then build 80 blocks of wool out of string. Um, uh, you see my, or if you haven't seen my string chest, it, it's pretty much full, so that's not a big deal. Uh, the hardest part is honestly getting the ink sacks to do the whole thing. I mean, that part just kind of sucks because I got to fish for them and uh, as you know from last episode I you can't see the bobber um, which is just so annoying that on this side too? Or did I fix it? It looks like I fixed it there. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure why I left that like that, but um, we've got it set up now, so not really a big deal. Oh my gosh. Alright, we're just going to have to take that down. should pretty much take care of that. Come on now. What? That is, no. No. What? Okay. You guys saw that, right? What? What just happened? Did it seriously disappear on my taskbar? That block was invisible on my taskbar, right? Like, you saw that? There. Alright. Wow. Okay, I can open that one. Forgot a torch up there somewhere. Okay. 
all the chests open. And that's all set. Let's go ahead and take a look real quick and see how our other branches are doing. Uh, not too bad. And that's that. That's three of the four branches complete. As I said, I'll go ahead and do this last branch here off camera. Uh, so when we come back in episode three, that whole thing will be done. We'll have the cactus uh, flowing, literally. And so we should have the money to get some iron and start some other projects. Alright guys, well, this has been episode two. And I'll talk at you later.